In the last 10, 15 years, we have seen quite a number of new respiratory viruses in humans. And first of all, we, uh, we identified a new virus around 2000, and that was the human metanoma virus. But we actually proved that this was not a new virus, but it was a virus quite similar to RSV, a virus that we know for a long time. And this virus has been with us for a long time, but had never been recognized before. And it gives considerable problems, especially in young children, severe infections in very young children. So that is a virus that has been with us for a long time. But on the other hand, we see new influenza viruses. And for instance, influenza viruses that come from the animal world. Uh, that means that we see avian influenza viruses crossing the species barrier, going into humans. And usually that means that we only see one or two patients at a time. That can be quite serious. The patients can even die. So we have seen H5N1, we see H7N9. Now these are all names for those new viruses that come from the animal world. But we have also seen that these viruses, these avian viruses, at the end of the day, they may change in such a way that if they are in humans, that they do not stop with one person, but they go from human to human. And we have identified the mutations that are important for these avian influenza viruses, once they get into humans, to actually gain the possibility to spread efficiently from human to human. If that happens, then at the end of the day, we may end up with a so-called pandemic, a worldwide outbreak of influenza, like we have seen in 2009, another pandemic of influenza. So that was the human metanoma virus, that was influenza. But we have also seen a new virus infection coming from bats, and that is the SARS coronavirus. We identified that particular virus with a whole group coordinated by the WHO in 2003 as a new virus that started to spread all over the world and an, and an enormous effort that we made all together uh, by different groups in the world made it possible to stop the virus from spreading and actually nip the, the, the emerging pandemic in the butt. So it was spreading worldwide, but we could bring it back and actually make sure that it wouldn't spread further. And exactly 10 years later, we were confronted with yet another virus, a coronavirus also coming from bats, but now coming through camels to humans. And that particular virus is the MERS coronavirus. We have identified that virus and that's a virus that, that really plays a role at the moment in the Middle East, but from Saudi Arabia and some other countries, it actually goes to many places in the world where, again, this virus does not spread very efficiently from human to human. What we see is that that virus, in, for instance, in hospitals, may cause little outbreaks. And we have seen recently in a country like Korea that the introduction of that virus by one patient actually led to quite a number of, of cases there. And eventually, they were capable of bringing it back. Well, you hear about all these new viruses, most of them, if not all, coming from the animal world. I think it's quite important that, what, like what we did for SARS, that we do exactly the same thing also for the other new infections. As soon as they emerge, and there will be other ones in the future, as soon as they emerge, we have to work together with different groups in the world, different disciplines, really to, to try and stop it as early as possible. We will have new outbreaks of influenza. There will be new pandemics. There will be other infections. We have to work together with all the technologies that we have today to really make it possible to, at a very early stage, yeah, bring the whole thing under control. So that's our mission for the future.